Welcome back everyone to Tio No The Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, but we're pretty much where we left off in the last episode. I've not gone ahead and um, done the war yet. We're back on April 22nd, but I did want to read about the parts of the ninth uh, five-year plan. The Great Siberian Highway Project. The M53 was a planned highway project meant to link Irkutsk with Novosibirsk. Fallen on the wayside due to the outbreak of the Great Patriotic War, and with its finished sections tarnished by the neglect of the many petty warlords that occupied the areas of land, where such as others' roads still existed. It's truly in a sorry state. Our economists believe that with the right investments, we could turn the old vision into a reality and link every major city of central Siberia to our capital. A massive boon to our economy at times of peace, and an equally great benefit to our logistics should our friends in the West not surrender the rightful Soviet territories they occupy without a fight. And come rebels' palaces of industries. The mighty factors of Kim Rubble are a testament to Soviet economic prowess, one that managed to survive several bloody wars and still go on from strength to stunning strength. With this great city back under the rightful Soviet control, will make it linchpin for the industrialization efforts in the region. Western Camp, Peniz, and Tomsk. A great opportunity has arisen. Thanks to our improving ties with the OFN nations and the great scientific expertise that reside in the city of Tomsk, there's now talk of Western medical companies seeking to establish themselves in the Soviet Union. If we accept, we can expect to be able to advance our own medical research sector as well. And Zaibatsu and Krasnoyarsk, Nissan, Toyota, and other major Japanese car manufacturers have voiced interest in setting up factories in the industrial city of Krasnoyarsk. If we manage the situation correctly and apply the right kinds of protectionist measures on the national level, or reap the financial benefits on a local level one, this could be a great boost to the Soviet automobile industry. The end of Yagoda. Ever since the party and the presidium has managed to outmaneuver him through their installation of best novice premier, Kendrick Yagoda had known that they would eventually try to remove him from his position as general secretary. And yet, when it finally happened, even he was taken by surprise. The early morning meeting of the committee, Central Committee, had actually been caught by Yagoda himself, attending to address a series of military and diplomatic incidents along the southern border with the Manchuria. However, However, surely if it had commenced, he found himself a victim of intense criticism by other members for his supposed encouragement of friction within the socialist framework. Having purged, many opponents himself over the years, he had go to new. Immediately that he was finished, outmaneuvered yet again, the vote, unanimous of course, and it was required for a public showing of a unity, was formality, it was over. Still, in facing political oblivion, he found himself unable to stand from the table's head. He was suddenly helped to his feet by the strong arms of two Red Army sergeants. No doubt called by Grinko, using a small device he could see attached to the inside of the man's jacket and forcefully directed from the room. As he was also out into the central vehicle in a small convoy was, uh, and driven out of the city at great speed, he could hear the radio announcing the appointment of Premier Sergei Alexeyevich Besanov as General Secretary, unifying the positions. That morning, he had been General Secretary Yagoda, and now he was only Comrade Yagoda, destined for internal exile in some remote town where he could do no harm and be closely watched besides. He supposed that he should be thankful. He, he would have been far less generous had positions been reversed. The guard has been changed, and look at this guy, a sad gay. Now, uh, I already took out the Commonwealth of Siberia, and unfortunately, Omsk did win against the WRF, so yeah. Supreme Commander of the Great Trial, this is not going to be easy. But, all, in all honesty, fighting this uh, Commonwealth of Siberia wasn't too bad. It was actually relatively easy. Their divisions were really, really, really bad. So, yeah. Um, yeah, basically all we had to do was grind them down so that they had no more equipment, and then they died. That's literally it. Uh, we'll come back to this for now. Oh, actually, this one? Do we want uh, this one? Brigada over cheapness. We want the cheapness. Even cheaper if possible. So, um, Other than that, we still have a lot of debt. But it's not as bad as it, used, as it was, of course, since we got more territory now. But right now, we... Uh, actually, I've been waiting. Right now, we minus 0.49 poverty rate change. Poverty rate is 41%. Not bad. Uh, still doing Zaibatsu and Krasnoyarsk. We could do Siberian reunification. We need to core more stuff. As we're working on all that stuff, we need to sweep westwards, even though we technically already did. Converting selling convoys. Um, other than that, we do have the Communist International as well, and we haven't really done too much with that. But I'm not really too worried about that. And the manpower issue, of course. Now, my only issue with doing this right now is when we reunite Siberia. Let me go and click on one of these. Western Mongolia, uh, Crescent Risk. We lose the state fishing armada, which helps us with a monthly poverty change as well as monthly population, and our, but our maximum credit rating will be raised, so it does kind of suck when you do this, but now we no longer have one of these things. And eh, it's probably already gone by now. Now one step back. Uh, Union Triumphant, so... Paris to Siberia. We also have some comments to go through as well. Uh, why did they get rid of that? No, I liked it so much. State remission, remigration pro programs. Ooh, we still have international volunteers. I'll be honest, you know, I actually really... Oh, also we have the five, fifth... Ninth five year plan. I actually really, really like what the devs have done. Now, I don't, I complain about the devs a whole bunch, you know, that's just me. But I actually really like what they did here with the whole remigration plan, increased monthly population stuff, getting international volunteers and stuff like that. I think that is a great addition. Also, if you're going to read about this, please go ahead. But I think that was a great idea by the devs. I 
love it, love it, love it, love it a tremendous amount. I think that was incredibly smart by them to do that, so. I read Siberia, though. For the first time since the 50s, all Siberians are united under the rule of the Soviet people and their representatives. Across Siberia, as workers read the words of Comrade Lenin and soldiers mobilized to defend the revolution's new home, and reactionary secure, secure, scurry in exile. With our initial position secured, we need to begin the process of securing a rule in these new lands against the forces of reactionary revisionism, who seek to undermine the restoration of Soviet power, of course. Kansky, yes, please. Economy. Oh, another joins the fold. Throughout history. Um, the top cross of society oppress a huddle during masses of workers, call it a tribal chief, a noble, an emperor, or CEO. There are all many iterations of one hateful concept. Tyranny. Not against one particular group, <clears throat> although that has certainly happened. It gets a downtrod in a society, every single collection of human beings. The proletariat, where we once raised our eyes to the baking Mesopotamian, Mesopotamian horizon, hopeful for a future yet to come, we now stand tall and mighty cross our peers, amongst our peers. As today has proven, we are only getting stronger. The vote to admit a fellow socialist power to the common truth is passed. Today is a glorious day for the workers of the world. Our movement is not an iron fist, gleefully beating against the oppressors until we attain freedom. It is a tide. A tide is slow, almost unmoving, yet bit by bit, it rises slowly. It washes away all that stands against uh, its goals until it's stood. Proud and triumphant. We are the tide, drowning in the capitalists. Against all the money weapons they will be throwing against us, they will only slow down the inevitable. Let them save the last few seconds of dominance, it will be their last. We cannot vote again until a month passes, then advance our advance starts new. For now, let us be merry. Oh, cool. Open city Magadan. Ah, uh, getting logistics is super important too. Holy crap, was that kind of bad earlier? Oh, do what? Yes, please. Into the atomic age in the Red Siberia. Continue the reforms. Add incarceration. Ooh, more growth. Uh, expand the gospel plan. The Siberian plan is moving into the next stage, and possibly the most important stage. Our central planners have proved to be excellent at their jobs, but they're now laughably few compared to the endless vast, endlessly vast central Siberian territories we've now taken. New administrators need to be hired, bureaus will need to be need renovations, and expanded and a devoted cadre of surveyors will have to assess new assets. With work, we can begin the old factories running, or get them running, and begin expanding them. Because fighting ops is going to be a god-awful pursuit, so... Oh, we can still sell convoys, which is... Oh, I love that so much. Yes. Yes. And we want to save political power for any reason? No. So... Oh, that's not bad. I want to get more academic base or research facilities. Yeah. Actually, where are we at? Maybe I should not have done that. Yeah, maybe I should have done that. Oh, well. Yeah, research facilities would have been better. That's fine. Whatever. We'll do it anyways. Screw it. Who cares? Hey, more production units. Yes, please. So right now, our divisions are not bad. We did throw logistics. We do recon on them. Um, I want at least air assault companies. Oh, we don't have any. Okay, yeah, well, that'll be okay. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Um, hmm. Experimental helicopters. Early helicopters. Scout helicopters. Early helicopters, eh? Because we never got assault helicopters, which is fine, whatever. Can't really use anti air now. And then anytime we'll get more of that stuff, we get more fighters as well. So, U U.S. reintegration memo number 0092. Uh, uh, let's go with five more first. And add more here, too. Guys, we could honestly probably always build more stuff here. Yeah. And supply is going to be an issue, too. So, we actually might want to start thinking about that. Along the rifle governor of the USSR, said Daniel and the receiver, the battered old, old telephone. Yes, yes, said his uncle, Ignati, on the other line. It's been his uncle, a longtime secretary for the Communist Party, who had managed to get Daniel's job in the administration in the first place. How are you fitting over there, old boy? Has anyone given you trouble? No, Daniel. I've been very well, but listen, they've assigned me to write the next reintegration memo, but I... You've already positioned yourself to be writing important documents in your first month? My goodness, Daniel. Your mother's going to be so proud of it. No, uncle... Ignati. I don't know the first thing about how reintegration is going. I fell asleep at the briefing because they had me working a double shift yesterday just transcribing those speeches. Daniel felt his throat tighten as he frantically tried to speak without outright shouting for the entire office to hear. Oh, Daniel Ignati said, okay, here's what I know. The territory that's being reintegrated is gigantic nephew, bigger than any nation could be asked to swallow up at once. Obviously going badly compared to the past reintegrations, but that doesn't mean it's going horribly. We've been adopting existing administrative entities within the territory as fast as we possibly can, but most are messy entities left over from the warlords. It's not all clean, Daniel, but we're slowly getting the territory plugged into our governmental apparatus. Unfortunately, we'll still need to reform the systems to better be organized soon after. Is it all clear, nephew? Uh, yeah, Uncle, no. No, we don't need to tell Mother about this, Uncle. No, 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 no. We don't need to tell her anything about that. Also, for industrial expertise, we're already at innovative industry, so. As much as I like this, we don't really need it. Agriculture, institutes, academic base. Well, academic base is going to go up anyways. Um, elite voting, register voting. Incorporate the West. Deal with the devil. Ooh, admin efficiency. Incorporate the West. 
Despite our victory over the main force of reaction in the West, the process of integration remains a long and arduous one. At every turn, the old elites and their puppets knowingly or not have pulled all the possible stops to prevent the integration of Central Siberia. History, however, shows that these efforts will be all in vain. Just as the white generals of old attempted to maintain their bloody yoke upon the people's necks, these elites and their efforts shall prove fruitless. Sure, bring up Minia on board. Why not? Corporate the West. Facilitate political recovery. The Soviet Union once ruled Central Siberia, and so it does again. Uh, yet, undeniably, the time the region spent under warlords and under the false Central Siberian Republic has left the locals with some doubts over about the legitimacy of our government in comparison to the old. We need to recover our lost image. We need to show the people that our vision of visions is not merely the correct one, but the only one. Nice. Very good. Get more planes. Planes, planes, planes will be very helpful. Get more helicopters, too. We're going to need quite a few. So all that stuff is done. Armenia, yes. No. Why, why would people not want Armenia? I don't understand. Uh, together, tie together institutions. The landscape of Central Siberia is a vast, and people many, and the territory is far flung. It wasn't possible to implement the exact administrative system we've spent decades perfecting in the Far East. Much of the bureaucracy in the region is a holdover from the old regime, or as, as sadly common from the petty <clears throat> the warlords who ruled the region a few years earlier. Great. It's time to bring the administration of the two regions together, bring the West up to par with the East, and allow the Soviet Union to run as a harmonious workers' machine it was always meant to be. Pretty much, man, pretty much. Naval rearmament? Might as well. Oh man, our debt's looking really good right now. If you want to be better, oh, that's a, a lot of surplus. Holy crap! If you want to be better, uh, this one, better military professionals, one, please go ahead. Excellent, awesome, flipping awesome. Lower bureaucratic restrictions. It would have been unthinkable a few years ago to run our old administration with anything other than party members and true believing Marxist-Leninists. Unfortunately, this restriction will need to be relaxed for the time being. We're taking too much territory that needs to be administered, and too little of it contains socialists in any significant number. We have little choice but to allow others into the government positions. We'll still maintain standards. Fascists need not apply. Wow. That's a lot of money, considering everything that's happened. Um, in the meantime, I want to make sure we keep working on industry. After this, we'll work on like logistic companies, too, as well. Complete the Siberian plan. Uh, so, right. Agriculture. Let's see where we're at. Like two months. Ah, old Bukharin had a vision for Central Siberia, where others saw only barren steppe lands. He saw a beating industrial heart pumping wealth through the nation on railways as though blood as though blood through Russia's arteries. We'll see the job done. The fact of Siberia are roaring your life once more under our guiding hand. We aren't far now, not far off from realizing Bukharin's great vision, and soon we will surpass it. Thirty three point eight percent, man. Eight point four four nine. It's gonna jump down to what? Or drop down, not jumping down, but drop down to what? Eight point one zero four. Great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. A deal with the devil. Ooh, what do we have here? Centralization? Sure. A minute passes and a small sip of wine. Now, that had been the actions of one tired man residing in Tomsk. Of course, his actions were not uncommon, but have been repeated across the city. Many more for the Central Siberian Republic and for the dawn uh, or the regime of democracy. That, however, was not the only reason the man drunk, for he was a humanist politician in the Central Siberian Republic. And he lost more, of the dreams, more than the dream of democracy. No. Oh, actually, we can do this too. <clears throat> no, for his political career as a humanist, went up in flames along with Tom's ideals. And unless he accepted the offer given by the governor in Irkutsk, he may be forced to live, within, live in a cold prison cell, or worse. But that would involve betraying his ideals, for Irkutsk was a complete opposite of all his ideals. They did not support the ideas of democracy, their leaders were the same men that oppressed his former humanist colleagues, and their leaders were a raving despot. For him to even think about accepting the generous offer, he would have to swallow his pride whole. But are his pride and ideals really worth more than his life? So long the remainder of the wine he had in his hand, the man swore and dialed the phone. I accept, the man muttered. I accept. It's in the collective economy. Perhaps upon taking upon the central uh, Siberian region, we've lagged a little in socializing. No matter, the time to begin collectivization is started now in earnest. Workspaces will be returned to the workers, whom they were stolen from after the fall of the old USSR. There's no exaggeration to say that thousands of new workers' collectives and unions will need to be created. Additionally, we can't ignore the collectives that already exist. We need to have representatives from the capital sent out to meet with them to determine what exactly they need in order to operate at full efficiency. Now, I don't want to do this one just yet. I want to make sure we get the whole economy done first. Keep working on that stuff for now. We are at... 
Yeah, give it one more month first. An open cultural exchange. Russia is a land of more than just Russians, especially here in the East. It behooves us to be a government that can represent all the cultures of the USSR and promote cooperation between them. Arguments can also be made that this is a pragmatic move as well. Cultures who feel represented will naturally feel more loyal and less likely to cause trouble. Lastly, nation the benefits from the rich cultural fabric of the collective art of many cultures will immediately be more pleasant and prestigious place to live. And then we'll do a collective, uh, extend the collective economy. And academic base, of course. Um, oh. Oh, that's about to go too. Well, actually, agriculture. Oh, good agriculture. If you're going about this one, please go ahead. Nice. So we can do agriculture. Yeah, I'll get rid of this one next. Yeah, we'll, we should have done next, whatever. And about seven days left. Not bad. Not bad at all. Hey, if you want to improve academic base, please go right ahead. Yay! Secondary schooling? Nice. Alright, so we do have enough air. Ant, ant, that's anti air. We'll probably need one up here. And honestly, I like radar a lot, but it doesn't really look like it's going to help us that much. Five points. There's nothing up here, which is not good. There you go. Western companies in Tomsk. Yeah, we didn't do a cross specific. Open the coastal city of this. A transitional approach. Oh, that's, I think both of these are for um, uh, the American one. The economy. And then expand the institutes. Russia's lost a generation worth of education of humiliating collapse of the USSR at the hands of the German menace. We cannot wait until reunification is finished to begin training the next generation. We've lost too many potentially great minds of poverty and anarchy already. We must push towards expanding our academic facilities as far as we possibly can afford. The next generation will be ready by the time our homeland is united. <clears throat> An anonymous virtuoso? The crowds flooding the Venudin's opera house last night were record-breaking as local singer Dominika Kuznetsova performed the first wholly original work of operatic music in nearly 20 years. The performance drew in both frequent opera growers as well as old enthusiasts who grew on board of the same shows and songs that were being performed week after week. The performance itself was a hit, and while the piece is not considered to be one of the all-time great hits of Russian music, it was certainly a welcome new addition. Kuznetsova, Kuznetsova Herself has declined to reveal the identity of the songwriter, insisting that he would like to remain anonymous, whoever he is. It's clear that the Burat would like to hear more of his work. As if to spoil the fun, recent arrival in the city, who claims to have resided in Tomsk until recently, insists that the piece is a ripoff of an identical piece of music that they composed and presented in Tomsk, but merely the few awkward sounding changes to make the piece sound less subversive to the communist government. Being the work that in some ways add a few strange, strange places, despite flowing beautifully elsewhere, it could be he's right. Copyright? We don't have pro that problem here. No copyright problems here. More growth? Nice. We continue the reforms. The USSR hasn't always had a good record for personal freedoms, despite being one of the slated goals of a great socialist experiment. The time has come for us to step down for paranoia and end the usage of the dreaded gulag system, allowing the people to act and move unhindered, alongside having a greater degree of political freedom. Though in the past we maintained the delusion that our nation was destroyed by disunity, we now have come to accept that we were toppled by the German boot. Allowing our people to not live in fear in author of an authoritarian government will strengthen us against fascists, not weaken us. Nice. Eleven percent growth is still not enough. Twenty-nine point five percent. We're in the sphere. Yeah. Comcon is not actually bad. Uh, total sphere GDP is nothing. Huh. Which doesn't make any sense. I mean, technically we're not a sphere. I think top ten economies. Guangdong, city Guangdong is pretty high up. That's actually really good. Uh, we're not even in the top ten, which sucks. But we're working on it. Ah, the their oil crisis. Oh, that sucks. If you're going to that, please go ahead. It goes Charles de Gaulle. Curve of the nomenclature. The Soviet Union was found in part to encourage rule over the masses by the aristocratic elite. Unfortunately, all we've done is replace aristocrats with a class of non-elected party elites instead. These men are all too powerful to be eliminated in the near future, but we can still fight their influence, even if the changes aren't immediately institutional. From now on, we're going to make it a policy of having these so-called elites rele relegated to paperwork. They'll be the rubber stamp to people's authority rather than wielding it themselves. The new role of nomenclature... Um, military assistance to Iraq. The end of the gulags. In a rare and welcome upset to the Soviet politics, Sergei Vesenov has continued to pleasantly surprise his nation in sticking to his promised reforms to create a less oppressive USSR. Though the NKVD has been grumbling quietly about it, it's unlikely that <clears throat> such an organization protests publicly at the changes, nor does it seem likely that they'll make a move against a party now that stability started to finally return to the nation. Vesenov drafted legislation this morning to do something unthinkable to many, ending the gulag labor camps and put an end to a nearly 40-year-old institution of national repression. 
To alleviate concerns that dangerous dissidents are being released out in the action or in the nation, Besnov had arranged for a fair retrial of the forced laborers based on the modern enforcement of law rather than the harsh policies of Yagoda. Other critics have pointed out that at the end of the gulags will cripple the state's ability to build infrastructure or other large projects, but the parties insist that anything built <clears throat> on the backs of slave laborers is not worth being built. On the other hand, Former prisoners are being formally offered jobs and good wages to continue working in construction camps, though it's unknown how many will actually take up this offer in favor of leaving the entire nightmare behind. I suppose we'll need to build some proper prisons now, won't we? Proper prisons, darn it. Up to four. Get more helicopters. There you go. Just in case. Standing against personalism? Well, let's do this one first. Establish closed facilities. Seven billion is not bad. The new role of the nomenclatura. Perhaps you misunderstood me, comrade. I'm a member of the nomenclatura, insisted Artur to the stuffy bureaucrat. The bureaucrat smiled and nodded placatively, as though speaking to a child. Uh, yes, you are, comrade Artur, and here's your important nomenclatura desk and your important nomenclatura paperwork. The impudent administrator causing Arthur's lip to crawl in anger. The desk in question was a far less than he deserved, little more than the sheet metal wielded onto a surface with a few drawers. It was a mass-produced thing that was unworthy of him, and as if the entire thing wasn't insulting enough, the paperwork in question, upon a brief look, seemed to be utterly important reports confirming grain shipments to and from irrelevant, impoverished villages on the far fringes of society. Comrade, I'm a member of the Nomocloria, bellowed in anger. Yes, you are, agreed the bureaucrat with a polite nod. Now we have the reports, have these reports on my desk by 6 p.m. A very special job for a special, very special boy. I'm pretty much only interested in sending airplanes, so only 20. Oh, that sucks. Uh, you just send this much? I guess I'm volunteers, but, you know, we all have infantry. We'll see how they do. I have a lot of enemy planes, but we, with a small amount of planes, we should be able to get quite a bit of air XP, maybe? No, never mind. We just lost it. God dang it, you piece of doo-doo. Alright, so with that in mind, let's go and start working on some more engineers, because we're going to need some more entrenchment. Because in 1971, everyone, happy 1971, we will probably need to basically switch over to the other template. Seven billion in debt. Not too bad. Cold days, yeah. That's what I thought. Well, you know, it gives one more month. They won't be able to do that immediately, so. Ah, uh, standing against personalism. The good system of governance was an odd contradiction based on emphasizing the collectivism of the masses and the individualism of those at the top. It led to the nation's a faceless mass, ruled by a charism uh, charismatic personality cult at the top. We're rightfully allowing the masses to have a sense of individualism in the US USSR, but we do must reserve, must do the reverse with the leadership of our nation. There'll be no more cult of personality, no more individuals taking credit for the labor of millions. And the pride of the Union. The fascists and the reactionists who try to halt the wheel of history laughed as it seemed to grow and stop under their hands, believing that they could remain masters of the world in perpetuity. However, the wheels have yet kept turning, as nothing could stop the fury of the proletariat and the global revolution to come. Now we stand poised to reunite the old Soviet Union, and nothing will stop the wrath of the workers as they crush their slave-driven drivers beneath them, not just in Russia, or even in Europe, but in the entire world. Yep, oh well. Investigating the personality cult. Actually, where are my planes? There you go. The best enough administration has spent perhaps more time than it might have thought strictly necessary investigating the cult personality that Gendrick Yagoda built for himself. Among other things, a series of rejected uh, propaganda photos which involved a shirtless you go to hunting, fishing, and riding on horseback through the wilderness have been passed around with great amusement between the party members. The effects of the cult surrounding you go to, however, no laughing matters. They all allowed him to act as an unimpeded dictator that could step over the proletariat as though they were his personal slaves without any fear of retaliation or checks on his power. After the party was finished cackling, I had a picture of you go to holding a leper once again, while shirtless. They elected to prevent such a thing from happening ever again. <clears throat> Clarifications were made to the public as to what the old administration had been lying about, as well as warning the public to never throw away their ability to skept think skeptically, even when it's the government speaking. Additionally, limits were introduced, among other precautions, about how much could be written or broadcast about the chairman or other important politicians compared to other news topics to prevent any temptation on the part of future chairman to force the state immediately to fixate upon him. Hey, look, a picture of you good at climbing a mountain. Where's the shirt? Hmm. Not bad. That's actually really good. But, oh well. 
Now we're out of equipment. Ooh, we're out of a lot of our artillery now. Artillery and transport helicopters, which makes sense. Oh, maybe I should have waited to convert them. God dang it, whatever. 6.79. Does it immediately go up? Oh, it went down slightly more. Okay, that's not terrible. Already, we need way more already. A few less planes. Actually, planes are okay. Those planes are okay. Yeah, okay, we're, we actually have enough. Huh. We probably should get better transport helicopters because we have some really outdated stuff, but whatever. Um, yeah, not bad so far. Keep training for now, though. Anybody learning about a foundation for research? Please go ahead. A memory of tyranny. It was while touring a building site, then happily noting that worker safety uh, precautions had taken place that Sergei Besanov came to a long overdue such a deed that he made the right decision. Kim Yagoda, Yagoda would have never done this. Would have never cared for what went on in a coal mine beyond sheer productivity. But Sergei did, and while the other might have complained that it was a waste of resources, while the U.S. saw more important matters to attend to, the truth has been that Basinov's reforms have built a strong, uh, united, and motivated nation. Quite unlike the reluctant police state that he inherited from his predecessor, Yagoda Yagoda. Basinov felt his fists curl up in anger at the memories. Socialism was meant to serve the people, not oppress them. And yet the tyrant in chief, the people were nothing more than slaves to a state machinery. So much was at stake with the flourishing state that they had uh, reserved, preserved here. In the Far East, and thanks to Yagoda, most of it had been lost to compromise the rebellions. Besanov promised he would do himself better, prove himself better, and today he was finally certain that he had done so, but Besanov had made another promise too, one that would be a lifelong endeavor. No one like Yagoda would ever rise to power again. Find the true com communist general you may live. Uh, sure, we can do that one too, because why not? At this point, because we're done with that, if you're wondering about these, please go right ahead, but we'll start again when we have maybe another war. All right, everyone, so a couple comments included. Uh, we killed Soblin, but now we are Soblin. So it all says, out of curiosity, which version of Hoi 4 are you using? Because apparently someone's TNO is having issues with the game, so... Yeah, um, I don't know, the most recent one. Also, so we've been doing this for a while, it's already April 24th, 1973, we've lost over half a million. We've killed off 1.9 million, we've actually killed off, we've been at this for so long, that Omsk had a living fiscal crisis, then they had the fiscal crisis, and now they're out of the fiscal crisis, but now they're 31% stability because fiscal crises really takes a toll on your economy, but we just got the cipher done for Omsk. And we're going to go in. At this point, I wish we could force the attack with some of these divisions, but at this point, with the Cypher, I feel confident enough that we should do okay-ish. We're out of guns, by the way, too, which sucks, but we do have spies in their territory, and they don't have a lot of equipment left, hopefully. So the goal is just to hopefully go in, but, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. They don't have a ton of equipment left. They have some, obviously, but I think we'll do okay from here on out. We did just lose four more production units, which does suck. We've actually been doing really, really well. I like what the Dez have done with uh, the Far East. They've done a very good job with it. Overall, even though I still hate fighting men and playing, the initial thing is Irkutsk, so. Uh, all right, so over here. Some more stuff. The economy's doing great. We have a billion in surplus, even though we're at war, even though we did uh, do temp tax hike, which actually lowered our surplus, and we're doing war taxes as well, so. We'll see. We'll definitely see. If we could take to Omsk, that'd be really good, because that's a supply point. We really need that supply point. But we're going to have way more casualties now, so it does kind of suck. 51 divisions. They had 65 earlier. So we've been doing relatively okay. They have, We actually have a bigger industry than they do. So oh, we took Omsk. Good job, guys. Good job. But yeah. This guy's level 5, 6, 6 now. Not bad. We have 27 divisions. We did lose a few divisions here and there, but, you know, it is what it is. How many more days do we have for this? Um, That's three. Three days until left. Two days. For the initial blitz. Better arty is good. You know what? Get even better arty if you can. Oh, an encirclement. Yes. We like those quite a bit. Another joins a full. That's nice. Hopefully, because, I mean, my god. Omsk, I mean, it makes sense why Omsk is so strong. It, don't get me wrong. It, it, it makes perfect sense why. But my goodness, is it a pain in the butt to fight sometimes? It is really just a pain in the butt. Over 2 million dead. Oh, for Omsk by themselves, which is insane. So... But, hey, at least we improve academic base and something else, too. Tertiary schooling, awesome. And increase in admin efficiency, ooh, yes. It's really helped explode the economy more to make it even better. More surplus, good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we're already maxed out with political power, as you can see, so. It is what it is. The gun stuff. Tons and upon tons and tons and tons of uh, army XP now to do stuff with, even though we don't really have anything to do with it. That's gonna suck. Uh, for tactics, let's do breakthrough. Because we can. 
So if they're out of equipment and we're out of equipment and no one has equipment, how are these guys able to hold on? Of course, I guess it was level 6 4, but we expect, but still. Good. I think at this point they can't really hold out against us too much. I mean, air superiority is absolutely crucial. Special cast right now in TNO at the time of this recording. Cast just does an extraordinary amount of damage to enemy divisions, which is why we've been able to hold on for so long. Because they started with 65. We had like 25 ish divisions when we started. So doing it like this is not bad. Eighty days ain't bad for that. Especially if we take more territory, we get more production units, we get more factories. But then again, you start to use more manpower up to and stuff like that too. Put down resistance and whatnot. Which does suck, but you know, if they're out of equipment, and you know, we are out of equipment too, don't get me wrong. They really shouldn't be able to do very much. Two million manpower. No convoys, which makes sense. Um, yeah. Peace. Oh, who's this with? Oh! Wait, we lost? Wait, how did we lose? Um, well, that's definitely different. I don't remember us losing. How did they beat us? Well, that's quite interesting. So, I didn't know this. This must be something new. I didn't know this, but we're at 100% because we actually declared war on them. Well, they've been at war for 504 days. They need to have been at war for at least 10,000 before surrendering. Wait, what? It controls 100% of victory points over Capetra that was 100 or less. Is this normal? I don't, I don't think I understand this. What? They've been at war for 504 days. They need to have been at war for at least 10,000 before surrendering. How? A Siberian Soviet Socialist Republic is 100 towards... How? It controls 100% of victory points and capitulated with 100 or less. H how? I, do I don't understand. If anything, we're on the offensive here. They don't control... I mean, there's no one's controlling ourselves here, so... Um... Is this bugged? This, I mean, maybe I'm just not understanding this? Um... So, I don't understand this. We've been doing extraordinarily well. I've been sitting here for like literally 40, 50 minutes to an hour doing this. This doesn't make any sense. I mean, what? Who controls our, No one controls our victory points. And how does the v, do VPs, are, are VPs different in this mod than anything else? I mean, I could be wrong. Please let me know in the comments below if you know, if you understand this, but at this point, I'm done. Um, that literally makes no sense why we would capitulate. So, unfortunately, we have to use cons commands to win this war, so... Please let me know in the comments below, like, why why does that fire? Do you understand why it fires? Is that a bug? Is that not a bug? Because I, I literally don't know, as you can tell. I literally have no idea why that happens, which I think is maybe just not explained. Obviously, I don't want to use cons commands, but if the game is going to force us to capitulate for literally no reason, especially if we're on the offensive and doing, I'd say, quite well, it doesn't make any sense why we would capitulate there. But you know what? Who am I? I'm just a guy on the internet playing TNO way too much. So um, other than that, I feel like we've done really, really well considering all the crap that we had to go through. Um, and then, well, I do, I do, I really enjoyed with some of the stuff that the devs have really put in the uh, mod. But stuff like that, our victory points weren't taking over. I mean, we had a little war sport, but our victory points weren't taking over at all. And if anything, we were taking enemy victory points, so. Anyways, like I said, leave that information for me below in the comments below, and we will unite all of Russia. Well, as much Russia we can possibly do right now. And we have a 33.33% .33 uh, poverty rate, which is not bad, but here we go. We're the mother line. Return to the Union. After the cataclysmic defeat at the hands of the Reich during the war, everyone assumed that there was no hope for the Soviet Union. That assumption was decidedly refuted today as a former presidium of the Soviet Supreme Soviet successfully recaptured the former SFSR. Directly descended from the Bukharin's administration, the CPS CPSU announced their intention to continue its legacy in the reborn Soviet Union. Foreign investors can look towards the socialist market economy in line with Lenin and Bukharin's ac new economic policy. As the nation begins a process of rebuilding the homeland, General Secretary uh, Sergei Besinov gave perfunctory remarks of a victory address before seating the floor of the various other party leaders along with the, uh, the Soviet Union. To the Union. Our party, like any other political party, strives for political supremacy for itself. Yeah, I just don't understand that. Like, I mean, that's happened before, like, when enemies would, like, give up. But yeah, let me know how 
the victory points work because apparently I don't understand them in TNO. Um, do we have a faction? No, we don't. Which I wish we did, just because I want to see how many members we can actually have here. Uh, I guess we're at intermediate right now, but we were—I thought we were already at intermediate, but whatever. Um, surplus is really good, obviously. GDP shot up, GDP ratio shot down. Um, so, yeah, I wish we could see the Comic Con because we are part of the economic sphere. So, our GDP is 63 billion, which is not bad. Yeah, but, huh. yeah, I guess it's just not, still not implemented yet, which makes sense. Comic Con, honestly. With us, with every one of these nations here, obviously it's not super, super, super great. But with this combined, like, we got Turkey in our sphere. Or not sphere, but, you know, I guess technically sphere GDP. Our faction, basically. With them, the UAR, Vietnam. I mean, we wouldn't, actually, we might be able to, we wouldn't be able to compete against the three major powers here. Maybe against China, maybe? But, you know, whatever. If you're the campaign, regardless, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.